What we're going to be doing today is process mapping. We have some butcher paper up here. Okay? There are a couple ways to go about doing this as far as the tools you use. We have butcher tape, butcher paper, excuse me. So we have butcher paper. You can use a whiteboard and actually draw as well. Uh, butcher paper is what I prefer because you can roll it up and take it with you and we get done. If you used a whiteboard or you just use post-its on a wall, you may want to remember to take pictures. Because if you take pictures, then you can remember, okay, this is how it was done. And typically you would input it into some process mapping software such as Microsoft Visio. Okay? So there are a couple uh, different ways to go about doing this. You can use symbols or you can use colors to indicate what type of step we're talking about. All right? For example, today we have colored post-its. As you can see, uh, we have six different colored post-its. We'll be using four today, but I wanted to bring out all six just to show you how complicated this can get and how, how uh, complex. Um, so first of all, we have the start point, and we'll use a pink. So go ahead, let's go ahead and uh, write down what type of step is each color, and we'll put that up here on the board to serve as a reminder tool for all of us. So when you're using colors, we'll use pink as a starting point, all right? Now, if you're using symbols, most process mapping is done with a start point and an end point. That's actually the same symbol. We're going to actually change it up. We use a different color for start and a different color for end, okay? So we have our starting point. Next, we have an end point. As you go through um, the process, along the way, you'll actually come up on different areas where the process may stop because of a certain um, event. Or perhaps a decision is made during the process, and that ends the process as well. So often when you get done process mapping a current state, you'll have several ends along the way indicating this is a decision that was made, this is information that was discovered in the process. Next is basically the standard process step. This is what we'll be using the most. So go ahead and write standard process step. This essentially says this is being done and we're moving on to the next step. Next, we have what's called a decision point. All right, a decision point is indicating a step where a decision has to be made. If it's yes, we go this direction. If it's no, we go this direction. Or if it's data related and if it's above 3,000 this way, if it's between 3,000 and 4,000, we go this way. If it's above 4,000, we can go this way. So a decision point actually branches off depending on a decision or data that is discovered or a decision that's being made, okay? Next, we have what's called a subprocess. All right? Now, what a subprocess essentially is when you're working at the 50, or excuse me, what a subprocess is, is when you're working at a 5,000 foot level, or 10,000 foot level, or even like a 30,000 foot level, and you have a decision that comes up to this process step. And for example, let's say we're troubleshooting something. Okay? Is the light red or green? It's green. Proceed to this step. Is it red? Stop and troubleshoot. And so you go to a different direction. And let's say that troubleshooting subprocess, there's a lot going on there. You got to check this, got to check this, you got to check this. And you don't want to get into it at this point in the process mapping. And perhaps you won't. But you, need, you want to indicate that this is a subprocess and there's a lot going on here. And perhaps you, uh, you map it out at a later date. Maybe you don't. And then from that process, from that subprocess, you can decide, okay, it's still not green, we're going to end the process, or we fix it, we make it green. From that sub-process, we can say, okay, it's still red, we need to stop the process, or it does turn green, now we proceed. Okay? And remember, sub-processes, you can, you can always map those out later. There's two other ones we're not going to be using today, but are kind of important. I want to let you guys know what they are. 
Um, if you're talking about a process that has uh, a lot of um, technical aspects to it, uh, databases, software, um, there's a certain symbol, or you can obviously give it a color as well, for a database. Meaning that during this process, there's a database involved, and if there's anything related to that, you can see it right away on the process mapping. Also, documentation. If during a process, documentation has to take place, it can be used as a special color or a certain symbol as well.